So Barry, aside from having a crush on me, has a crush on Bill Murray. <laughs> it is his probably favorite person in the world, and I found this for this was a Christmas present, it was, it right? It was Christmas or birthday yeah, or something. It was a Christmas, and it's a drawing of Bill Murray uh, from The Life Aquatic. So he looks he looks after us, makes sure we're safe. Blessed by Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm Jordan. And I'm Barry. And we're known as the Brownstone Boys. Welcome to our Brownstone in Brooklyn, New York. Let's take a look inside. So this house was built in 1890s, we think uh, late 1890s. Um, it is a traditional brownstone. Well, I am from New Orleans originally. And I'm uh, from Las Vegas. So we're both from, you know, pretty much the only two cities where you can walk down the street with a cocktail in your hand. <laughs> we met online and we met a year before we bought this house together, which was a risk and my parents definitely thought it was, was crazy. Was it even a year? It may have been under, your, under a year. Actually, I think you're right. right? Uh, yeah, but uh, it was a risk. <laughs> and it's working out for us. The second day we took a bike ride throughout Brooklyn and we discovered we both shared a mutual passion about brownstone architecture. There was a lot of work done to this place when we got it. Uh, it was a five bedroom and we converted it into a space that would work for our needs. So we turned it into a three bedroom with an office. They also had bedrooms kind of everywhere. Yeah. Like there was a bed, like they really went all out with like making sure there was many bedrooms. So the kitchen was like kind of jammed into the middle right here. And there's a bedroom in the back, and that shouldn't be there. So uh, we sort of uh, made this the living and dining floor, and all the bedrooms are upstairs. We are project managers for historic home renovations, so we particularly do the brownstones. This all started through our own renovation, and we blogged a bit about our entire experience of renovation. And it became quite popular in the Brooklyn community. So we kind of had a conversation together, and we at said, do we want to do this professionally? And sure enough, it was something that we were both very passionate about. So we took the leap of faith and um, we're making it work. So this is the parlor floor of our brownstones, the main living area. And this is where we spend a lot of our time. This is where we, you know, eat, work. This is where we bring clients to talk about <laughs> tile yeah. samples. We're TV people, so we had, you know, we just went back and forth if we should put our living in the middle or yeah. in the front of the space. Uh, brownstones are very long and narrow, so ultimately we decided that the TV was important for us. So we decided to do living in the middle and then put our dining up in the front. But we really love it because you have the natural light in the front and then this kind of gives us a really nice space between the kitchen and the dining. So you totally got it the place. Pretty much. I mean, we, we know we were Barry stored. Barry says we didn't got it, but we got it the place. <laughs> it was a lot of work, but we like, you know, we like to say we restored a lot of stuff. I love the historical aspects in here. So the plaster moldings, I just think they're really special. Yeah, I'm laughing because sometimes I look over on the couch at Barry and I'm like, what are you looking at? Yeah. He's just like <laughs> smiling and wait, gazing up into the plaster molding. I'm like, oh, it's admiring the moldings yeah. again. I mean, you know, it's kind of amazing just to be like hanging out on your couch and having this around you. It's you cute. Know? <laughs> yeah. One of the things that we really wanted to do that was important to us was obviously to restore the original features that were in the house. But unfortunately, our house had a lot of original features removed before we bought it. And one of the things that were removed were every single fireplace. There probably originally was at least four fireplaces and every single one of them were gone. So we wanted to add one back in. So we got this marble fireplace mantle. You know, we love that we were able to contribute something back into the house yeah. after it was removed. And there's so many different salvage yards around New York uh, that have these incredible marble fireplaces. And most of the time people wouldn't know they're marble because they're covered in layers and layers of paint. Yeah. And it's something so easy and something that anyone can do is just remove all the paint from the marble fireplaces. So this blue bad boy has been with me for a very long time and when I first moved to New York I found this blank canvas on the streets of Prospect Heights and I picked it up because I knew one day I was gonna make an art project and I sure did. This believe it or not folks is from egg crates and I just cut them to different sizes and I glue them on here in a pattern and then I added some hot glue to it. I think it's the perfect piece for the space. So this light fixture is one of our favorite pieces that we have. Um, it's actually made from reclaimed wood from water towers on the top of buildings in Brooklyn. Uh, it's from a company called Stickball. What's been the most fulfilling about this particular project? Ooh, that's a 
Great question. I would say the wood stripping. Um, just our, our original goal with all the woodwork in here was stripping the wood, which took us forever, but we were just gonna repaint it just so you get a nice clean layer of paint. But we saw all the original wood and it was just so beautiful in the space yeah. that we decided to keep it natural and just add a nice tongue oil to keep it as matte as possible. So let's head inside the kitchen. So this is where we are with all of our friends all the time. This is where everyone just comes right here, lines up. We all we have you know food out and Shark drinks. And, and, yeah, and we it like really to do it up. We did have to take a wall down here. There was a bathroom Very here. Hard. There was a wall. There was a little hallway. There was a closet over here. So there were lots of walls that came down to make this possible. We also had to put up a beam, um, but we we love it. it. Was worth the effort to get this kind of like open feel. Uh, for the space. So our stairs are original to the house and they're very squeaky. We actually call them our alarm system because if anyone tries to creep up them at night, we will know. They're not getting past this. <laughs> <laughs> this is our bedroom and one of the biggest challenges in New York City is closet space. And we knew we weren't gonna get our dream walk-in closet, but we built a his and his. Um, and it's really nice mix of shelves and uh, clothes racks, so it hangs all of our shirts. Jordan's and side is the cleaner side. That is my side. <laughs> like one. And um, they're equal in size. They're, they're equal. They're in identical, size. actually. They not, they are totally identical. We did the exact same thing, so no one can claim someone has more closet space. How would you describe sort of your overall design style? That's a really good question, and I, I mean. I think our design style differs in a lot of ways. Like Jordan likes like a lot of really colorful things. I like a lot of neutral colors and grays. I put tint. I want to paint everything gray. All tiles should Barry be gray. Barry would only have two colors if it were allowed. He would have a charcoal gray yeah, and would. an off white, and those would be the colors that yeah. you would see throughout the entire home. Like our bed. Like yeah. our bed. Or I, I would have painted this wall charcoal gray. I love Jordan. a pop of color. You'll notice a lot of pinks throughout the home and a, a bright blue, for example, and that's all my design. But together, I would say the thing that we both love, anything mid-century modern, 100% sign us up for. So one thing that we had in our home when we moved here was an Ikea tabletop hanging out in our basement. And it stuck with us throughout the entire renovation. And after we moved in, we had kind of space between our bump out here and Barry and I decided that we were gonna make a DIY shelf system. So we took the tabletop, we cut it different sizes, we stained the wood, and then we inserted them right here in the left of the nook. And now we have this beautiful open shelf on the side of my bed. So let's go in the bedroom that almost gave Barry a heart attack. And you'll know why real fast, because of all this color. There's so much color in here, but it looks amazing. One of the first things that you might notice is that there isn't a window in this room. The skylight makes it the brightest room in the house, which is great, but it still needed a view. And so we put the view on the wall. <laughs> yeah, and I used to work at an ice cream company helping them build out the scoop shops. And I worked with this amazing artist there. Her name's Lauren Kalen. And she did all of the murals for all the ice cream shops. And I was just so fascinated with all of her artwork. So I asked her, I was like, Lauren, would you mind doing a piece of art on our walls here in the home? And we left. Three hours later, we came back and we told her that we wanted something vintage, something botanical. We came back to this masterpiece and she just really took our vision, brought it to life. And it really is just the brightest and most joyous thing in our house. And we love it. So this is, this was, and it still is, an Ikea dresser. And it was like your very average, plain, inexpensive dresser that you get from Ikea. And uh, what we did, we just, we, we hacked it and we made it into something a little more interesting. So we cut out these middle panels here and we put in this molding and we put in this uh, rattan webbing, um, painted it this kind of like light blue color and put this new hardware on. So it kind of gave it a little bit of a new life. So there were two things in our basement when we moved in and that was the Ikea tabletop from the shelves in our bedroom and this orange chair. I think this chair is just perfect in the garden room as we like to call it. So welcome to our favorite room in the home, the bathroom. This is our guest bathroom. And you know, one of the things that I think people notice first is this vintage door that we got. 
Uh, this is just really fun. We kind of, we saw it, we were in a restaurant, I think, and we saw something similar to this, and we were like, that's what we want for our guest bathroom. But we had difficulty finding it. So we actually we had to found, make it. Yeah, so we had to make it. But we found this old school door on eBay, I believe it was. Yeah. And we, what we did is we ordered it, we received it, and then we cut it out and we added the molding and then we took the measurements for the glass and we found an amazing company that does vintage wired chicken glass. Um, and they sent it to us, we put it in, it looked perfect except it needed some color. So we added this bright green and then we wanted to give it all the characters. So we added the doubles, WC stencil stands for a water closet. So this bathroom is all new. It was actually a little tiny bedroom that you couldn't even fit a bed, bed in. And because it was a new bathroom that we were building in the house, we wanted to give it sort of the look like it's been here for a while. A little bit of old school New York look. So very classic, like, uh, you know, hex florette on the floor that you see all over New York and Brooklyn. Um, classic subway tile on the walls. You have a utility sink. Uh, clawfoot tub. This clawfoot tub is actually a new tub. Um, it is cast iron, but the new ones are so much lighter than the old ones that we went with the new ones. Only 300 pounds instead of like a thousand. Yeah. And one of our favorite pieces that we still hang on the wall here is a newspaper clipping from a renovation project that we were working on. And we found this newspaper underneath the clawfoot tub. And this newspaper dates back to 1906. Pretty amazing. It's just amazing to kind of think about what has happened. You know, we're sitting here watching our frame TV and watching Netflix, but what have other families done over the centuries to, you know, in this house over the years?